Chapter 8 Revenge In the heart of the night, in the darkest dark of the darkness, something stirred from the fen. It was shaped like a snake, a snake as black as jet, long and fat and hissing, but it moved across the marshy ground faster than any snake that ever was, because it had tentacles that pulled it through the mud as quick and slick as a butter going through knife. Its flesh was greasy. It had red lips and hanging breasts. It dribbled green bile and goblets of blood. The wind in the grasses, which had whispered at Grendel's coming, held its breath as icily as this new horror slithered on toward Hall Harrow. The rats ran away tails lashing, eyes blind with panic. The owls forgot to ask their who, who, who. The creatures of the fen knew who, and they were frightened. A long, long time ago, she had come from her bottomless pool to join with the murderer Cain. The fen shook then with unnatural storms as it witnessed their loathsome embracings. The moon dripped blood, and the strict stars collided in their courses. A bolt of lightning struck Cain dead for the horror of what he had done, but she lived on. She was too much a part of death to ever die. She was neither older nor younger than she had been in the beginning. What she was could never be destroyed. A werewolf howled on a crag. A cloud of white vampire moths hovered above her grisly head. She had no name. She was she. She. She, Grendel's mother. Unferth knew. Unferth knew that something was coming. Not even his boil or his silver trinket or his long black cloak could comfort his hands this time. They twitched with a life of their own. His thumbs pricked, his fingers itched. The veins in his sweaty palms were hard and swollen and painful, half moaning, half humming. He sat and watched the sleepers in the hall. He despised them all. Stinked Rothgar, he thought. Stupid Rothgar, ugly Wesleyow, murderous Beowulf. They were only people, silly creatures of flesh and blood, mortal trash. He hated them. Unferth longed, for he knew not what. Something vast and dark and terrible. Something that would recognize him as a cut above the merely human. Something that would press him into its hideous heart and make him welcome as its own. He was terribly alone. He did not belong here. In a torchlit hall littered with cups and harps, the debris of celebrations he had taken no part in, he belonged out there in the night, the fatal darkness, the imperishable black. For day, he thought, did not really kill the dark. It was always there, out there in the fen, living on in the veins of the children of Cain. Beowulf believed he could put a stop to it simply by slaying one monster? <laughs> what a fool! He, Unferth, knew better, knew that good and evil were locked in such an endless contest that the death of just one of the powers of darkness was no significance whatsoever. As well believe you could destroy a tree by tearing off a single leaf. And the tree of evil looked taller and more familiar to Unferth than the slender green tree of good. Its twisted roots went down into his own being. He could feel its festering sap in every fiber of him. Even his boil, he reasoned, was an outward mark of his difference from such as Beowulf. If only Grendel had understood. 
what Grendel had not understood. Grendel had tried to kill him. Why? Unferth slapped his side as a sudden illumination came into the dark chamber of his thought. It was not Grendel who had misunderstood. It was himself. Grendel had wanted to take him for his own, to bear him off to where he belonged, to join the baleful company of the Fen. But he, Unferth, had held back through fear. All at once, he hated his fear, the sweat on his cheek that proved him weak and human, the trembling of his hands that measured the distance between him and Grendel, all the frailties of his humble mortal state. Unferth stared at his own flesh with a bad taste in his mouth. It seemed an unwarrantable interference, something that held his lovely capacity for evil behind bars. If only he could strip it off, be free of it, live solely and forever as some sort of cruel essential ghost or demon of himself, if only. If only! Unferth gnawed at his knuckles like an animal trying to rid itself of a wounded and unwanted limb. He was very near madness that night. She came into the hall. She made no noise. She looked up at Unferth and she smiled. Her lips were red. She had eyes in her breast. Unferth stood up and stretched out his arms. Welcome said. Whilst Liao woke first, on the edge of sleep, she had dreamt of a sow eating her pharaoh. She opened her eyes and saw that Grendel's arm was gone from the hook in the rafters. She woke the king and Beowulf too. Both shook their heads as if to clear them of bad dreams. Beowulf said, It seems we slept deep. Too deep for safekeeping, said Whilst Liao. Grendel's arm has been stolen by some thief in the night. Rothgar started up with a shout. That's not the worst of it, he cried. Look, there by the golden tapestry. Oh, Asher, Asher. A man's body lay face to the wall on the ivory floor. He had a dagger in his back. He was dead. Beowulf bent over him. It is Asher, said Rothgar brokenheartedly. Tears glistened on his cheek and the winter whiteness of his beard. His jutting jaw went slack with sorrow. Asher, Asher, my best friend, dearer to me than my own hand. We were boys together. We went to war together. A splendid man, his mind as sharp as his sword. I loved him. He is dead. Only Grendel could have done this. Beowulf was peering at the dagger between Asher's shoulder blades. I have seen this hilt before, he said. This dagger is the dagger Unferth drew on me. Unferth! Unferth killed Asher while he slept? Why? Why? There is no why where Unferth is concerned, said Beowulf. He acts as a beast would blindly. He is at the mercy of his own evil and hardly knows what he does. He shall die for this, vowed Rothgar. Guards! Guards, find the vile, treacherous coward Unferth in whatever dark corner he is hiding and bring him straight to me. But Unferth was not to be found. Danes and Geats searched everywhere to no avail. All they discovered was a strange, sweet-smelling spore that led twistingly into the fen. Beowulf said, This much is clear. Asher is dead. Unferth is gone. Grendel's arm has been stolen. Now, Unferth probably murdered Asher. It is his dagger, and the deed looks like him. But it's unlikely we'll ever know for certain, because... What do you mean? cried Hrothgar, bra eyes bright for vengeance. We will find Unferth and torture the wretch. Until I think Unferth took Grendel's arm. His wrists weren't strong enough to lift down without dropping it and waking us all. He was a weakling in more ways than one. Wealthlyar said, You speak of him as though he were dead. 
I shall be surprised if he is not, said Beowulf. There is the matter of the spore, you see. Something came out of the fen for Grendel's arm, and whatever it was that came took Unferth too. And killed him? asked Rothgar eagerly. He deserved it. Perhaps, said Beowulf. <sighs> Wathlia sighed, distressed by so much horror. What do you think it was, the creature? Grendel? Beowulf shook his head. Grendel had no might left. I broke more than his arm. He is surely dead. Then who? demanded the king. He was desperate to set out in search of someone or something in order to avenge poor Asher. I do not know this country, said Beowulf. Perhaps you can tell me of other monsters who are known to haunt the fen? Something that moves in a twisty way, like a snake and leaves a spore that smells as sweet as mother's milk? Rothgar frowned, confessing himself at his wit's end. Something sly and noiseless, prompted Beowulf. Something more terrible than Grendel. Wathliel caught her breath. She had remembered the stories of her childhood. The most loathly and ancient bugaboo her nursemaid had ever frightened her with. At the same time, she remembered Unferth's fascinated talking on this subject, here, in the very hall where they now stood. Beowulf looked at her keenly. Yes, he said. There is only one thing it could be, said Wathlia. She has no name. Perhaps she is too horrible for people to want to name her? Just so said Wathliel. She is Grendel's mother. <laughs>